Okay guys, we're here for the next part of the video. What we're going to cover now is going to be the uh, the electrical aspect of the car as far as wiring in the uh, again we're going to be using the A2 harness. We're going to be wiring into an EG Civic. So we're going to go through as far as adapting that to the uh, car's chassis and we're also going to go through the uh, ECU and any of the complexities that uh, come along with that. Okay guys, so we're in the car. Um, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of stuff in here. Um, first let's just get a kind of let you guys see what I'm working with here. Like I said, it's not done, so, you know, bear with me here. Um, but let's just check out what I got so far. Okay, so, uh, just got a stock dash. Everything's gutted out in here. Uh, this is a custom steering column here uh, that we made. I was actually going to, it's a bolt in. I was going to start selling these, but I didn't get a, with a quick release, I start selling these, but I didn't get the response I was looking for. Um, like I said, everything's not really wired up. Stuff just kind of down just to get the car, you know, moving. I'm running the AEM EMS 2. We're going to get more into that. So I'm going to go and pull this dash. That way we can get a better look of this bird nest of a wiring that I've got going on. And uh, but just to give you guys a, uh, an idea of, you know, what you're looking into as far as, as uh, wiring this car up. <music> So we got the uh, we got the dash out. So let's uh, let's check it out and get into the wiring aspect. Okay, so again, this is all just for mock-up purposes. But we've got our A2 harness entering in the cabin right here at this point. Let's go to the other side so we can get a better look. Okay, let's got the A2 harness running here, and then it runs. So, trying to get the best look possible here. So basically, we'll just swap cars. A2 harness, the engine harness is going to run into. I'm just going to plug into the uh, into the ECU here. Then after that, you've got a you've got what you call a swap harness. Uh, people that's familiar with the uh, K swaps or are familiar with that. So I really don't remember what brand I bought. I just bought a swap harness for a um, standard K swap with an RSX-S uh, wiring harness for a EG chassis. So let's check that out the best we can with this rat's nest I got going on. Okay, so this is part of our uh, our swap harness here. And pretty much all that does is that's gonna and pretty much just connects the engine harness to the chassis. And it makes it very easy. It's pretty much plug and play. It wires it down to probably like I don't know, five or six wires or so you actually got to hook up to the car. And I can't really remember all the specifics about that. It's been a while since I've done this. But as far as that's concerned, you pretty much just kind of follow uh, the instructions on your uh, conversion harness. And hook all that up like you would in the standard case swap. Okay, so the main thing here is your ECU. So we're running a AEM EMS Series 2. This is a, if I remember correctly, a 30-6030. This unit is uh, made for a O2 RSX Type S, your K20A2, your standard swap. Okay, now the reason I went with this over a K-Pro, Honda K-Pro is a great unit, but it's kind of it's similar to what I've got in my Eclipse Turbo uh, DSM Link. Um, you're still using your factory ECU, but it's a very uh, programmable, and like I said, both great units, but you're still limited to some um, adjustability because, tunability rather, because you're still basing, the system is still based off of a factory style ECU. So there's going to be some aspects that you're not going to be able to change. And like I said, for the majority of your cars, it's not going to be an issue. That's why I went with the AEM EMS. Because this is a standalone ECU system. And which means virtually every aspect of this is going to be adjustable. Whereas um, your systems that are based off your factory ECUs like K-Pro, that's not going to be the case. Uh, going with the full standalone gives you a lot more adjustability. Um, not quite as user friendly, 
Uh, I'm no tuner myself, and the car still needs a lot of work as far as the tuning goes, but it's been quite a bit of a learning curve. Um, uh, just being able to make some uh, some of the adjustments just to get the car running. The reason I went with it in this application is because on your K-Pro, your Honda units, um, like I said, you're limited to a lot of what you can change. And the main thing is going to be that crank sensor uh, because being that this car has a, I think the crank sensor located at the back of the, uh, near the flywheel section of the car on the Z7 engine is I think that's a 40 wheel crank trigger I'm not exactly sure I can't remember versus the K20A2 it's not a 40 tooth I'm again I'm not even sure what that one is but it's not the same so that's why I went with the AEM series 2 you can build a complete crank uh, trigger map from scratch the good thing is the being that I went with the A2 harness being that this is still a standalone system, it is based off of an RSXS. So I'm able to use plug and play my, my A2 harness. That's going to make it a whole lot easier versus building an entire you know, harness from scratch or whatever when using a complete universal system. Because this isn't, even though this is a standalone, this is based around the RSXS, the K20A2, and the A2 harness. Okay, so as of this point, we've got pretty much covered everything. Um, from the physics, getting the engine in, the differences. Um, some of the wiring touched on the wiring a little bit, but that's not, you know, too crazy there. So let's talk a little bit more about the ECU and why I went with the uh, AEM EMS2. So I went with the AEM 306030 specifically for the reason that it's going to be plug and play with my wire and harness. So now the question was, was this kind of ECU going to drive that crank sensor? So I've done a lot of research. I don't know anybody, uh, you know, that has done a standalone. I've searched and nobody had went standalone yet on a Z7, except for one company. And I remember this from back in the day when the 9th Gen SI, which is where the K24 Z7 came out of, when it first came out, Bizimoto built a promo car for Honda. But so I went back and read through that article. I think it was in Super Street, and I seen where he actually there wasn't much information on it, but it said he was using an AEM system. So they got me thinking, hmm, not sure which system he used, but at this point I already had the harness and I already had the ECU. So I said, well, let me reach out to these guys. So I sent them an email and I told them what I had. I was doing a swap, you know, and the chassis. I had everything ready to go, and I had this 306030 30 ECU, and I asked them if there was a way that this would uh, run my car um, with this crank sensor and uh, I'm paraphrasing here but it was something dealing with the uh, they said a 306030 would have to be modified to accept the digital crank output from the Z7 uh, crank trigger um, not exactly sure what that means anyway come down to it they said that it had to be modified. They can modify it in house. I ship it to them. They charged me 200 bucks. They modified it and sent me a base map. I got it back and they gave me a great starting platform because at this point the car's running and I know that this swap is possible. That's pretty much where I'm at the point I'm at now. I've made some, uh, some adjustments with the base map. Uh, the car runs and it runs halfway decent. Still needs to be tuned. Um, I'll continue to make more videos on it, and when we do get the car tuned, uh, you know, I'll be able to video that and report on the process, on the whole process as far as getting this car where it needs to be. Because I think there's a lot of potential in this Z Series engine, and again, I just want to do something different. So if you guys stick around, I'm gonna be uploading a lot more videos of this car and the progress on it. Um, I've actually got a lot of plans for it. I've actually got a few parts for it already. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what they are. That's gonna be another video. And we'll get in that. I'll uh, go around the whole car, show you everything that has been done, and some of the parts I've got, and what I want to do with it uh, from here, uh, short term and long term. So you guys stay tuned and comment, say what you think I should do to the car, um, and if you've got any more questions regarding the swap, uh, anything of that nature, I'm going to be answering. So yeah, stick around, subscribe to the channel, uh, share this if you know anybody else that's trying to attempt this swap or thinking about it.
Appreciate you guys watching this and sticking around. Let me know what you think. Thanks.